We are ready, Mexico is ready, and I think the choir is ready. 51 years in the making, the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square returns to Mexico City. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> this is a dream come true for me. Oh, I'm so excited. Estoy muy emocionada. <laughs> this is home. This is home. Action! We're trying to speak to them about hope and love in their own tongue. Buenas noches! Como esta Mexico? I walked out there and I just saw people, excitement, energy. I felt on cloud nine, everybody was singing along with us. There was an outpouring of joy in this concert, and there was such a connection between the Tamako Choir and 10,000 people from Mexico. A world tour unlike any other. We had a goal when we came here to reach 100,000 people. I think we've clearly exceeded that. I felt the spirit, I felt joy, I felt peace, I felt hope. say it's a battalion size move. Uh, there's just a lot of logistics that would go into this. Obviously it's a lot of luggage, it's a lot of wardrobe, it's instruments, it's, it's uh, equipment that we need. Where are we going? To the wall. An incredible undertaking in the heart of Salt Lake City. Rejoice, the Lord is King. The Tabernacle Choir on Temple Square, one of the oldest and largest choirs in the world packing up and leaving headquarters. For Mexico City, marking the initial stop of their world tour, which will extend to several other countries over the next four years. It's the first time they've traveled in nearly five years because of the pandemic. It's a big group to be taken. It is a big group. Michael Levitt, a former Utah governor, is now the president of the Tabernacle Choir. Why Mexico City? Well, Mexico City has a large population of members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, so we knew we could reach a large audience there. There are also 32 missions of the church. We hope that we'll give a boost to the missionary work. We know we will. Touring is nothing new for the choir, but this world tour spanning four years and focused on hope will be unique. In the past, the choir might have gone to a particular region of the world and may have gone to three or four countries and performed at a concert hall and moved on to the next city. We're changing that pattern to go to one area of the world where we will then perform several times and then use technology to expand and magnify the impact of that visit through social media. Levitt says his new presidency felt the mission statement of the choir needed to be expanded. Three words needed to be added throughout the world. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is a worldwide church. It has more of its members outside the United States than inside the United States. And so we want the choir's mission to reflect that worldwide mission. As part of the global outreach, the choir chose 10 international singers who all reacted with tears of joy to join the choir for April's General Conference, a first in the choir's history. He lives, my prophet, priest, and king. Two of the singers, Georgina Mantamayor my Lord, my and Denise Ilorza are from Mexico City who not only got a chance to come to Salt Lake. Esta noche tenemos el honor de invitarlas aquí arriba, Denise Elorza de Tijuana, Baja California, y Georgina Montemayor de Monterrey, Nuevo León. But join the choir on stage in Mexico City, a dream come true for the sister-in-laws. 
So it's only like a dream very, very far away. Like you cannot even think of it. When I was a little girl, I saw the choir for the first time and I asked to the missionary who baptized me what I need to do to sing with them. And he said, um, you need to uh, live in Utah and know about music. And, and I said, like, oh, it seems so far that I never <laughs> went to live there. We know it's impossible for us who do not live there. It's impossible even when you study music or even when you love music and you love to sing. The sisters' dream became a reality when they independently auditioned and were invited to sing with the choir. And she called me and she was in tears. And I was like, why are you in tears? And she was like, I didn't know you were auditioning too. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to, and I'm like, what, are you serious? I was so happy for me to participate, but I know that she loves to sing like me. An opportunity of a lifetime for two sisters who love to serve. When they told me about the mission, that I'm going to be a missionary for the choir, I feel so humbled because I always want to serve a mission. I feel the spirit so strong with the music. Now it's like uh, two dreams in one. Be part of the choir and serve for like a missionary. I'm so excited. I can believe uh, it's a dream come true. We know we have a strong testimony that we try to strive to, to be better uh, people every day, to try to keep the commandments and be faithful. So this is, I think, a blessing for every Mexican. This truly will be a historic moment. One week before leaving Salt Lake, a final coordination meeting. It has been 50 years since the choir last visited Mexico. An incredible undertaking. 450 people will be on tour, which includes choir members, orchestra, and support staff. So excited. Choir member Dominique Zarco was born and raised in Mexico City. Zarco, welcome. Good to see you, brother. Wow, it's like coming full circle. And so was her brother, who is also a choir member. The two couldn't be more excited to be going to their hometown. And now going back and performing at a venue literally like two and a half kilometers from where we went to school. It's amazing. And then singing to our people. I can only imagine how meaningful it's going to be. So I'm very excited. An incredible sight in the heart of Mexico City. 10 busloads Welcome. of singers, musicians, and support staff here for a six day, three concert tour. I'm excited too as a, as a former missionary to Argentina, uh, Spanish speaking missionary, also to, to have the choir singing so many songs in Spanish. Welcome to Mexico. The Tabernacle Choir on Temple Square, here to kick off their world tour. We are just more than energized. Everything we've prepared, we've spent so long preparing, and it's for these people specifically. And I mean, we can feel like the spirit of the people here, and it's just like energizing us. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> this is a dream come true for me. I have never been anywhere with the choir where we could sing in Spanish and speak Spanish, and that's my thing, I love it. Anna Lynn Osborne has been in the choir for 20 years and has gone on multiple tours. This one is different. I was overwhelmed with the feeling that I got when they told us that we actually got to do missionary work on this tour because we haven't been able to with security concerns and stuff. I anticipate we will deliver a message of hope and peace to the people of Mexico. The last time the choir was in Mexico City was back in 1972. That's 50 years ago. That's why it's so historic and so meaningful to so many. Two of the free concerts held here in Mexico City at the famous National Auditorium. 
where some of the greatest international stars have played. <laughs> 10,000 people filled the auditorium each night, the choir delivering an energized and colorful ray of music from traditional to fun singing in multiple languages a total of 17 songs singer songwriter and musician Alex Malicio hosted the two-hour concert Buenas noches Mexico ¿Cómo estamos? a dream come true for this Mexican native who now lives in Utah. For me to be able to be here was magical. I couldn't have scripted it <laughs> better. It just exceeded all my hopes and expectations. Es un verdadero honor dar la bienvenida al artista internacional y estrella de la película de Disney, Encanto. The concert also featured special guests and international acclaimed singer, songwriter, and performer, Adasa. A ver si se acuerdan. No se habla de Bruno, no, no, no. The voice of Disney's Encanto character, Dolores Madrigal. And it was through our management team and my husband that they contacted us and asked if we would be willing. And I already have, like, my booking is all the way into, like, February of 2024. And immediately I was like, we've got to cancel everything. We've got to do this. I was like, yes, 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 I can. When you're standing in front of the choir, you feel like there's angels behind you. I think it's the closest thing that you can live of heaven on earth. I think that people felt the genuine nature of the Church of Jesus Christ giving them a gift. And it had nothing to do with religion, it had nothing to do with your station, rich, poor, old, young. It was just, let's come together and have a celebration of hope, of love, and be able to feel uplifted at the end of the day, regardless of what's going on in your life. It was a moment to just turn it all off, sit down, and feel at peace. Esta historia comienza con un pequeño niño de cinco años. There were also moments of tears as guest artist and acclaimed radio host and journalist Mariano Rosario, who is considered one of the most influential voices in Mexico, told a tender story about his life and losing his wife to cancer. Esta noche, si quieren elegir, si quieren volver a elegir la esperanza, Porque quieren elegir la vida, la fe y el amor, enciendan la luz de su teléfono. And everything just was glowing. It felt like you were in the middle of the stars. And we all were just feeling that moment and there was so much joy. The audience could not get enough. The choir performing three encore songs. could feel the energy right from the moment that it began and even before it began. You could just feel there was electricity in the air. And I think that that really inspired all the performers to just really want to give their very, very best offering. This is maybe. You don't ever want to say favorite, but this might be our favorite audience that we have ever experienced. We felt one with them in a wonderful way. What'd you think? We loved it. Asombroso. Amazing, unbelievable. The joy, the energy of the concert extended right into the plaza. Nobody wanted to leave. It was a wonderful concert. I really enjoyed that because in the Anglican Church, we sing hymns as well, so we really enjoy that. I think it was a truly amazing experience with such powerful voices, such powerful instruments. 
I don't know, the, the sounds, the, the echoes in the whole building were amazing. I thought that it was like a lot of good music that I genuinely like. Like I really liked the country song. Yeah, the choir is impressive, really impressive. The town of Toluca, about 40 miles west of Mexico City, known for its colonial architecture and this beautiful historic Catholic cathedral in the heart of the city. The choir is here. Musica! Not just to perform a concert, Two, three, four. but to film a music video as well. Four, three, two, move. They are filming in three different locations, one scene inside the cathedral. Another in the plaza area. Action! And the third location inside this world renowned stained glass botanical garden that left everyone in awe. Wow! Wow! Like, there's no word. Like, I don't know. Speechless. This is just amazing. It's like, wow. I'm like, this is Mexico. This is awesome. Construction of this amazing stained glass botanical garden started over 100 years ago. 33,000 square feet with 45 tons of stained glass in 28 different colors. This music video shot in Toluca was quickly edited. and featured in the two concerts in Mexico City at the National Auditorium. All part of the choir's goal, to connect with people in a whole new way. We do it in music, which is a very special language. It's a language that is not just heard, it's felt. And so people can receive this message in a very unintrusive way. It can be shared through the heart. Touching the hearts of tens of thousands of people in Mexico through music. All started here inside the Toluca Cathedral, where the choir held its very first concert. A fitting place for hymns of praise. And songs from around the world. The choir performed 14 numbers and three encores. We not only sang the works of the great master composers, but also some folk music, of course hymns, and then some of the music of this beautiful land of Mexico. Y creo que debemos escuchar y sentir que hay esperanza. Before the concert, a special dinner with local leaders, where President Michael Levitt announced a $5,000 donation to the Diocese of Toluca's Superior School of Sacred Music. And we hope it's only the beginning of a long friendship. Archbishop Raul Gomez Gonzalez of the Catholic Diocese of Toluca and other prominent religious and government leaders <laughs> then got a chance to see the choir perform in the Sacred Cathedral. Hoy pensamos muchos, como lo piensan también los hermanos de la Iglesia de Jesucristo, de los santos de los últimos días, que hoy nos está diciendo el Señor, a través de estos signos de los tiempos, que hemos de estar más sólidos en esa unidad y en esa comunión de fe y de esperanza. Esta fue una experiencia y un abrazo de Dios para todos nosotros. En esta casa construida para la gloria de Dios, ha sido casa común hoy para dos grandes familias que creemos en Jesús. I cannot find a word in English nor in Spanish. Noah Garrido is a professional choir conductor in Cancun, Mexico, and traveled all the way to Toluca 
to see the choir in person. Thrilling, thrilling, exhilarating, peaceful. Music is, a, is a, a means of bonding people, regardless their creed, regardless of social uh, position, regardless of any other thing that, that might set people apart. Noah wasn't the only one in total awe of the choir. Pues lo máximo para mí. Sobre todo, yo creo que esta vivencia de vida va a permanecer por mí por muchos años. Que me parece algo extraordinario poder vivirlo. Eh, no sé, cuando vi la, la invitación me parecía extraño en una catedral católica, un evento que de pronto no es muy católico, pero me parece que es una, una puerta que se abre para poder compartir nuestra fe desde diferentes lugares. Oh, I felt the spirit so, so much. It's been, it's been great to have them. The venue has been very special. I have never been in a venue like this, but the acoustic and the, the, the choir and just the spirit we felt has been wonderful. I think it's very special that they try to make it like for us, you know, like singing those local songs, singing in our language, it makes it special, it makes us sing with them. By the sound of the music and the size of the choir, you would never know that several choir members were actually missing here tonight. Many were out sick. Obviously, if you start to feel faint, sit down. This might be too much information. <laughs> but dysentery has been a thing. But prayers were answered and miracles happened. A lot of us just sort of prayed that we would get through the concert in Toluca on Thursday night, and miraculously, we did. And many of us were, were concerned if we could even sing. And what we found is that just a few minutes before performance, many of us recorded that we felt this surge of power into that room that helped sustain us through that process to where we felt like we could sing the entire performance because we were filled with something that we feel like the Lord gave us. A tuba player in the orchestra was particularly impacted. Fortunately, another tuba player who knew all the music was flown in from Utah. He made it just in time for the Saturday night concert in Mexico City. That was a really marvelous miracle for us. Just with people feeling quite ill and then being able to have the stamina, we just finished playing a string quartet for the VIP dinner and our cellist has just been poorly all day, but she did a beautiful job. Sometimes you have disruptions, you get sick, and some of our colleagues did, but they were steadfast in their devotion. And the thing I was most impressed with is how other choir members ministered to their needs. Remember, today is the concert. A time of celebration. We are very happy. As Bishop so David Alonzo's special. ward prepares for a big night. A watch party, just one. Of dozens of locations set up across the country to see the Tabernacle Choir perform from the National Auditorium in Mexico City. A chance for members to connect with the community. through the power of music. The spiritual emotion we have is very, very, very great. Hola, hermano, bienvenido, ¿cómo está? Wow, it's been amazing. Hermano Alfaro <laughs> and her companion, Hermano Morales, are also very excited about having the Tabernacle Choir come to their mission. For weeks now, the two have been handing out dozens of these cards. How many cards have you given out? Like a hundred or even more. <laughs> inviting people from throughout their area to come and see and come and feel. We were contacting everyone on the street, on the Uber, or the taxis, or buses, and everyone seemed so excited when we told them. It is a true blessing. It is, 
it is wonderful because I mean we have seen the blessings of music we love music we love street contacting and so this was <laughs> the perfect um, opportunity to do it more organizing watch parties and engaging members and missionaries all contribute to the choir's unique tour objective. We gave members a small little card. It's called the gift of music. We said, just give it to your friends and say, here's music that gives me peace. I think you'll like it. For those who did come. Yes, I feel so good. Yes, really, really. It was well worth it. This is the opportunity that just uh, happens uh, once uh, in, uh, in 50 years. Oh, sentí el espíritu de Dios en cada uno de los participantes. I think it was very special because talk about the faith and the hope. And I think the world needs hope in these days because it's hard times. But the choir was not here just to do concerts. They also wanted to reach the community by helping in another way. Las semillas así se vuelven gotitas de esperanza, de amor y solidaridad con las personas migrantes. By giving a gift to this Catholic Charities Organization, a very large food donation, 15 tons of food. What better representation of hope and love than to give food to people who are in dire need? And so this was a, <clears throat> a wonderful opportunity to collaborate with the Mexico area presidency. The food will go to feed hundreds of migrant families who arrive in Mexico from other areas of the world. We feel a good uh, feeling of brotherhood with a Catholic Church and with other churches. For Elder Hugo Montoya with the Mexico area presidency, it's a tender moment. He remembers well as a young boy getting the same kind of help. We were poor, really poor, but uh, we don't know at that moment that we were poor because the love of the people. So because of that, uh, I really understand how the migrants feel during the travels in our country. So we would like to help them. So we are uh, very happy to you, this gift. Mario Perez is with the Catholic Charities Organization that will oversee the food donation. The uh, Jesus Christ of the last day in Catholic Church, we work for, for a conviction that all we are brothers and sisters. The message of hope also being delivered before reporters and cameras during a press conference with local and national media. 25 media outlets showed up. The next morning after the Tabernacle Choir's first concert in Mexico City, a four-page full-color spread from a national newspaper praising the choir and its music. There are so many aspects of what we've been doing that I think really will reach so many more people than just those who are able to come and hear the live concert. And after the tour was over, the residual media coverage was huge. There were 380 media-related articles from print, TV, radio, and other news outlets, reaching over 2.5 million people in print and news portals, and 8.2 million people in TV and radio coverage. Plus, for the first time in its history, the choir streamed their concert on YouTube, where anyone around the world could watch. That will have an impact. It will have an impact on their lives. It will have an impact on the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Mexico at a time when good things are happening here. It's wonderful to see how there was a thread that united so many people all over Mexico, but I believe in South America and even in the United States all over the world uh, with a common joy today in the music, but also in the topic of hope that was shared together.
The tables are set, the food is ready, and the anticipation is building. Demasiado emocionada. Aria Fernandez has been waiting for this moment for years. In fact, since she was six years old. The chance to actually meet a member of the world-renowned Tabernacle Choir on Temple Square, a choir she has only seen on TV during general conference. But today, members of the choir have come here to this stake center in Toluca to mingle and eat with church members. <laughs> Aria can't believe it's happening. Para poder expresar lo que siento, porque no tienen idea de la magnitud que sus voces tienen en cada una de las personas que les escucha. Well, thank you. It's so good to meet you. Sus voces son como ángeles del cielo. It's a powerful emotion to realize how important their, our visit here as a choir is to the members of the church. They're just so excited, ecstatic about us being here. Es muy especial. Nos llenan de amor en casa. It's very special. They fill our home with love. Nos llenan de paz. They fill us with peace. Others also overwhelmed by the choir's presence. I just feel the spirit is so strong with them, so they give so much. I feel like we come to sing and share our voices, but they share their hearts and smiles and who they are. And I just am so grateful to be here and to meet you. Thank you. But they did much more than enjoy a meal together. Choir members played soccer. sang songs, and played games. This is Mexican, Mexican candies. candy. You need to taste that. A day the Gabaldon family will never forget. I'm so happy. I'm like so thrilled to meet them, you know, because they can express so much through music. Ana Laura says the choir inspired her to get into music at a very young age. It moved me to love music. And then uh, when I was uh, ending elementary school, I started playing the piano because I wanted our ward to have a pianist so we can sing like the choir. The Aztecs call this place Mesli. Mesli means moon. As we know, this is the pyramid of the moon. But despite their busy schedule, the choir did get a chance to go out and play tourists get out to the famous pyramids just outside of Mexico City. This is, this is just so fantastic because this, this looks like Mexico to me. Yeah, just the, the scope of it, how big everything is and how old it is. The world-famous Teotihuacan pyramids are about an hour's drive outside of Mexico City, one of the most popular tourist attractions covering eight square miles. For choir members, it was a chance to get a taste of the culture and re-energize for their next concert. It's great to have some time off because we work so hard to get where we're going and, and practicing all the music and we want to be prepared and want to be ready for it. But of course, reminiscent of when they were here over 50 years ago, they couldn't visit. <laughs> without a little impromptu performance. To be in this beautiful place with these beautiful people, I really felt the opportunity to not only share um, our joy and our hope, but also to learn from them. In the heart of Mexico City, high on a rooftop, overlooking the iconic plaza, historic cathedral, and the massive wind-driven flag, Action. at first, September 19th, is a well-known face and voice. Seemed like a normal day here in Mexico City. Followers of the Tabernacle Choir recognize and love. Lloyd Newell, the announcer for music in the spoken word, 
since 1991. President Hinckley called me and he said, you'll do it till further notice and it's been 33 years. The Tabernacle Choir and Orchestra at Temple Square present Music and the Spoken Word. The historic broadcast, Music and the Spoken Word, is the longest running continuous radio network broadcast in the world, starting on July 15, 1929, 94 years ago. And the Spoken Word by Lloyd Newell. This is meant to be a half hour respite from a, a darkening, troubled, turmoil filled world to be a place of hope, of positivity, of, to help bring people closer to the divine. We hope it brings people closer to God. Try spending some time among God's creations. And today, Music in the Spoken Word is filming several episodes in Mexico City over two days, all part of the Tabernacle Choir's world tour. But Lloyd is not the only one in front of the camera. History is being made for Music in the Spoken Word. For the first time in its nearly 100-year history, more faces and voices are joining Lloyd in a completely different language. A pilot program to bring Spanish-speaking announcers to the weekly broadcast so that those in places like Mexico City will no longer hear a voiceover, but see and hear an actual native speaker delivering the messages of hope. 94 years, it's been in English and now we're beginning to roll it out in other languages. Desde este lugar, frente al Zócalo en la Ciudad de México. It's a way to connect locally with people that we're delivering the message in your language instead of just a voiceover or a closed caption. You know what, um, it's like coming home. Television journalist and church newsroom reporter Garna Mejia is very excited to be part of this pilot program. <laughs> She also becomes the first woman, outside of past guest narrators, to be an announcer for music in the spoken word. That's really humbling and I'm really grateful for it, but I fully acknowledge and recognize that women have been a huge part of music in the spoken word through the choir, through their voices from day one, behind the scenes, making all of these wonderful things possible. Podemos encontrar nuestro camino hacia el Señor. Singer, songwriter, and performer Alex Malicio me complace anunciarles la nueva serie de programas de música y palabras de inspiración. Is also very awestruck to be part of such a historic weekly broadcast that goes into homes across the world. It's surreal for me. So exciting um, to be a part of history, to be able to do this in, in my native language for the people of Mexico and Latin America. Alex and Garner both believe this pilot program will prove to be successful in connecting with people from foreign countries in a whole new way, especially here in Mexico City. I can see this becoming a part of people's routines in their worship, where on Sundays they're like, hey, this is what we do. This is how we draw closer to God. And so we listen to this and we talk about it. I think that the church's goal with these pilot programs is to bring them hope, to bring them light, to help them know that they matter, that these messages are just as important for them as they are for people all over the world. I think it's really quite a remarkable thing. Mac Wilberg, the Tabernacle Choir's director, says this is a huge step in accomplishing their goal of taking their message to the world. And now with the presenting of music and the spoken word to so many, many uh, countries in their own language, I think is a very significant thing and something that we didn't even think would be possible even just five years ago. We're very hopeful, very positive, working very hard to make this happen, to roll this pilot forward, and, and we hope it can have staying power and, and roll out in other languages as well. We hope it makes a difference as people see and connect with people that are native speakers. So it's all of these really great things for the Church of Jesus Christ that are just showing how much they love all of the members around the world and all of the efforts that they're making to make sure that everybody can feel close to God regardless of what they speak, where they are, or how they live.
I think we could not be more pleased with the way this first kickoff concert of a worldwide tour happened here in Mexico City. It is unbelievable. The Mexican people have been starved for this for 50 years and have been so excited and so welcoming and so warm to us as we've been here. It's been an amazing, incredible experience. There was an outpouring of joy in this concert and there was such a connection between the Tamaco Choir and 10,000 people from Mexico. The energy was as high as I've ever felt anywhere. The music was wonderful, the guest artists were fabulous, the part audience participation was extraordinary. We felt one with them in a wonderful way. What I love about tour is the ability um, to connect with people through music because it transcends all barriers. It's the most pure language we have and you can feel it when it reaches the hearts of the audience. And I just wanted to be surprised <laughs> and I was surprised. <laughs> they are amazing, they are just unbelievable. We just love them. We really had three goals. The first goal was to open our world tour with a message of hope. Uh, the message of hope was delivered. The second objective was to give the people of Mexico and all of the places where we go a sense of belonging. They belong to a worldwide church, and it's important that they see and feel part of that. The third was to make additional friends for the church in Mexico. There were many guests from different sectors all across Mexico who I think, in fact, will now be our friends. I think we've accomplished the mission that we set forward, and we don't yet know the breadth of how dispersed the message will be, but we think it's big and we think it will have a profound impact uh, on the mission of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Mexico. The choir has a tradition of singing God Be With You Till We Meet Again at the end of just about every performance that, that we, we do. Last night, the audience sang that back with us, which was just such a, a great feeling for us to feel like they want us to come back. We felt a, a special warmth and a, a special welcome in being here, and uh, hopefully it won't be another 50 years before the choir comes back. Muchas gracias y buenas noches.